All right, guys, well, let's go through our trickiest connections in the endocrine system. Once again, which is going to be the hypothalamus and pituitary connection. Real quick, I mentioned this a little while ago. I'll mention it again that the hypothalamus um, is directly connected to the pituitary gland. So it's under, you know, control of the pituitary gland. And basically, the pituitary is going to act based on what the hypothalamus tells it to do. Okay, so let's try to draw this out. Hypothalamus is funnel shaped. If you read that in the notes. So we'll put hypothalamus here. It's kind of an oddly shaped, funnel shaped organ. Below the thalamus, I think I mentioned this to you a long time ago, it doesn't have anything to do with the thalamus. Hypo just means below, that's it. Thalamus was you know, part of the, the sensory pathway, it's a relay center, it has nothing to do with the endocrine system, this is in the endocrine system. So that's our hypothalamus, we're going to draw a little connection here. This is going to be our pituitary gland, which is directly connected to it, and we're going to try to draw all this out here. So here's our hypothalamus again. We're going to kind of try to separate this because it is separated. First off, we're going to talk about the stalk. This stalk has a name and it's called the infundibulum. So that's literally the name of the stalk that connects the hypothalamus to the pituitary, you know, directly. We're, the pituitary is uh, made of two lobes. And so we're going to put over here that this is the anterior pituitary. To it, and then over here we're just going to make this the posterior pituitary. Okay. Notice I drew a line in the middle showing that the two lobes are actually completely separate. So it's one gland, but it's separate on the inside. And that's one of the tricky parts of trying to understand how all this works. You're going to see in a little bit the anterior pituitary is going to make six hormones. It's going to physically make them or secrete them, right? posterior pituitary isn't going to make any hormones, okay? That's part of the tricky part. It's going to store two hormones, but it's not going to produce any, okay? Hypothalamus is going to make eight, okay? So it's going to produce or secrete again eight hormones. So how are we going to break all this up so it kind of makes sense? Well, the hypothalamus, and this is the easiest way to remember this rather than trying to memorize everything. It's a lot of hormones here. Because if you do the numbers, right, you got eight hormones being produced up here. How many do we say the anterior pituitary makes six? So that's 14 already. This one simply stores two. So, you know, it's 14 total. I mean, that's a lot of hormones, okay? <clears throat> Some of them you have to memorize. But little trick for the hypothalamus to start things off is it's going to produce, so we'll just put produces six and this is the key part, inhibiting and releasing hormones. Okay, what, what's, what's, what's kind of like the key part of all this is that again, it produces six inhibiting and releasing hormones. So anytime we see a hormone and it has the name inhibiting in it or releasing in it, that's special. Because most hormones don't have that inhibiting and releasing name in it. If it has that name in it, it'll be like growth hormone inhibiting hormone or gonadotropin releasing hormone. It's got that word releasing or inhibiting in it, right? That tells us it comes from the hypothalamus. That's the trick. If it's abbreviated, it'll be like GNRH. The R is releasing, right? So all these inhibiting and releasing hormones come from the hypothalamus. They're produced in the hypothalamus, and this is going to be part of the key part. They are going to be produced by the hypothalamus. They're going to go through our infundibulum. We're going to talk about what part of the infundibulum they go through. They go through a special portal system. Okay, They're going to pass through a portal system. There's a big name for the portal system, the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system. 
I don't think the name's that important other than to know it is a portal system. So again, these six inhibiting releasing hormones, they go through a portal system, which is inside this infundibulum, right? And notice where they're going. Where are they going? Anterior. Anterior pituitary only. That's where they go. So if we ask the question like, hey, what do these six inhibiting releasing hormones pass through? Well, they pass through the portal system. By the way, what is a portal system? Anybody have any idea? It, I mean, it's a uh, you know, system of blood vessels, right? So it is, uh, if you want to call it a pathway, it's a blood vessel, in a sense, pathway, right? It's a system of blood vessels, and to be specific, it's two capillary networks, or two capillary beds. That's by definition what a portal system is. So, in other words, these hormones are passing through two capillary networks on their way to the anterior pituitary. And what are they going to do? In the anterior pituitary, they're going to either, guess what? Inhibit or release, right? If it's a releasing hormone, it's going to release a hormone. Does that make sense? If it's an inhibiting hormone, it's going to inhibit a hormone, okay? So we said earlier that the anterior pituitary makes six of its own hormones, correct? So these six hormones are either going to be inhibited or released based on you know, what these hypothalamus hormones are, you know, are telling it to do. So the anterior pituitary, we can just kind of abbreviate for now uh, what it produces, but two of them you're probably going to remember. It made, do you remember... FSH and LH. Do y'all remember those? Follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Makes those two. These, we'll just put stimulate the gonads. That's what we said a long time ago, right? The ovaries and the testes. Stimulate the gonads to make, if it's a male, make testosterone. Remember, make ABP, which deals with, you know, two deals with sperm production. Uh, if it's a female, we know it stimulates estrogen and progesterone, right? And that's the job of those two uh, hormones, okay? What's another hormone we'll be talking about in a little bit? TSH. Anybody know what that one is? It's a good guess. It's thyroid stimulating hormone. So that's an easy one. It tells you what it does, right? What does it do? Yeah, it's going to stimulate the thyroid. Stimulates the thyroid to produce hormones. So TSH is going to stimulate the thyroid. We have ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. Pretty um, long name, but think about it. It stimulates the adrenal cortex, adrenocorticotropic hormone. Okay. Then we have two more, which are a little different. We'll explain why we have growth hormone and uh, prolactin. So growth hormone stimulates growth. <clears throat> What's prolactin do? We've mentioned prolactin before. Anybody remember what prolactin does? Prolactin. Oh wait, that's for the breast. Yeah, so it stimulates milk production. Those are your six. Now, where do these six come from? Again, quizzing you on this. Where do the six come from? The anterior pituitary. Directly from the anterior pituitary. That's correct. They were made right here. They are either going to be released when these six inhibiting, uh, sorry, six releasing hormones tell it to be released, or they're going to be inhibited. The inhibited hormones tell it to be inhibited. But they're basically under the control of the hypothalamus. Does that make sense? So. That's the way you want to memorize these. You know, if I ask a question about anterior pituitary, you want to be able to say, okay, you know, these are the six hormones that come from the anterior pituitary, and these are the basic function. I mean, we're just keeping it super simple. With the hypothalamus, we're just going to remember that there's six inhibiting and releasing. Okay? Now, we said the hypothalamus makes a total of how many, though? We said eight, so we're missing two. What are the other two? The other two are going to come from a different part of the hypothalamus. They're basically uh, going to come from neuroendocrine cells. Neuro meaning nerve, right? So neuroendocrine cells. What are those two kind of different hormones? They are ADH and oxytocin. Okay, these are also 
made by the hypothalamus. And we will talk about what they do in just a minute. What's the difference? Well, use a different marker here. ADH and oxytocin are going to be made up here in the hypothalamus, just like we've been talking about. They're going to go through the infundibulum, but notice they're going to go through a different part of the infundibulum. They are not going to go through the portal system, okay? Uh, the portal system is for what hormones to go through? Oh, inhibitory. For only the inhibiting and releasing. So ADH and oxytocin are not going to go through those. Notice they are not inhibiting and releasing hormones. Okay. Let me try to draw this here. They are going to go through a tract. Big name, hypothalamal, hypophyseal tract is what they call it. It doesn't really, I think, matter that much. More so just to know that it is a tract, and tract is a nerve pathway, correct? So these are neuroendocrine these are produced from, these are hormones produced from neuroendocrine cells that go through a nervous system tract, essentially, right? So they're going to go through a tract to the posterior pituitary. So then what did we say about the posterior pituitary? Did it make any hormones? Does it produce any hormones? We said no. What does it do? Yeah, it stores. Obviously, these two. So all these two do is travel through the tract and basically get stored and of course released when necessary by the anterior pituitary. So all we're gonna say about, I'm sorry, by the posterior pituitary. So all we're gonna say about this posterior pituitary is that it stores and releases ADH and oxytocin. What do ADH and oxytocin do? Well, ADH stands for anti-diuretic hormone. If, if a diuretic makes your body release water, Right? Lose water, what does antidiuretic do? Yeah, so it's water retention. And it has a blood pressure raising effect on the body. So it retains water in the body. If you have a problem with ADH and you're under producing ADH, you're going to urinate like crazy. Okay, because your body's going to lose water. What ADH does is it basically makes the kidneys hold on to more water. <clears throat> it has a blood pressure raising effect. Okay, so you can remember those two functions. Oxytocin, if you remember, uh, does a few things. It deals with labor contractions, right? We talked about that before. And we also said that it deals with milk ejection during breastfeeding. Not milk production, that's over here prolactin. This is milk ejection. So what in the world does it do for a man? A man, it deals more with like the sexual uh, response, libido, um, uh, climax, things like that. So we're just gonna remember these, the, the, these are, I guess you say more popular functions. We're just gonna remember these, which are obviously more female uh, functions uh, to oxytocin. So that's our relationship between the hypothalamus and the pituitary. We'll quick review again. We've got a total of eight hormones right, that are made up here by the hypothalamus. Six go through the portal system to the anterior pituitary. The other two go through the tract to the posterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary makes six hormones, right, of their own or of its own. There's your six in a real basic definition or function. And then the posterior pituitary makes none but stores two, the ADH and oxytocin, and there's your function. So that's relationship. If you can understand that, you've got the tough part of the endocrine system.